Great combinations, you heard him. Here is where Morales was able to land the counter uppercut. Now, it didn't hurt Hamili as much as he would have liked because he was backing up and threw it off his back foot. But he was still able to get some good work done on the inside. And you see the good defense of Hamili, though, keeping his hands up and not allowing Eric Morales to land the really big shot. Well, here we go in round number four, and we'll begin to see if, if Eric's beginning to figure this guy out. As we said, he didn't know a lot about him coming in, and so maybe he's starting to figure some things out. Certainly a good round three, good solid round three in favor of Eric Morales. Eric Morales is, <clears throat> make no mistake, a boxer from the ground up. He put on his gloves for the first time at the age of five. His father, Jose, was a title contender in the 1970s, so he li has lived, eat, and breathed a boxing since he was a five-year-old. He trains in a gym over his father's store here in North Tijuana. I mean, you can't be more grounded than that when you're training over your dad's store. He still lives in the north zone of uh, Tijuana, an area that's a little rough, but... Uh, Nobody bothers him. No. Nobody no. bothers him. Quite comfortable there. He is aware that US, U.S. boxing critics have said he doesn't fight in the U.S. enough. But he'll take that as long as he can bring the championship here and have people come here to fight him. Well, and I think the really the fights that where he has to fight there because of site fees and things he's done and he will do in the future, but. I admire the fact that he wants to bring fights here to Mexico. He said so many Mexican champions haven't been able to or wanted to do it. Right now, Hamili is being an aggressor, but a careful aggressor and an intelligent aggressor. And doing a great defensive job. Riante Hamili is keeping his hands up. He's lunging a little, but not getting hit so much with counter punches. And there's a good shot from Hamili. Well, he's not intimidated, not to say all. the least. And he's working hard, a very workmanlike effort here. And, and the, the other important point, Alan, is that he has tasted several of Morales' big power shots and he hasn't gone anywhere. He's working from the outside now, a little movement from Hamili. I think he's getting more comfortable. He seems to be oblivious. Well, this has, been his, this has been his best round of the fight, and he's taken the crowd out of this fight a little bit yeah. because of what he's done in this round. Now Morales is trying to come back off the ropes, but Hamili keeps boring in. Took it on the chin there, another combination right in the face. And he's throwing to see if Morales continues to press it. Right inside, yes. Morales will jump on you quick if you give him just the slightest opening. It's a great finisher. And I think he thought Hamili was hurt there, and I'm not sure he was, but he did come back well in this round. Closing seconds, round number four. And that's the end of round number four. Eight to go if it goes that far. And despite the fact that uh, Morales came back with a good rally at the end of that round. The best round of the fight so far for Hamili. Here is where Hamili was able to come forward, landed a good solid left hook and a right hand. Pretty good combination to the head of Eric Morales. And that speaks to the fact that Hamili is not throwing just one punch at a time. Well, Al, I've seen four rounds of Hamili fighting, and he didn't come in as a 
as a stiff by any means. He has some, he has some abilities, and he's doing the best with them. Well, so many times in these lighter weight divisions, people from either from Europe or from Asia come in, and you just don't, in South America often, you don't know that much about them because they have never fought here. And you get a chance to see a couple of tapes that don't really show you enough, and then they end up being tough fighters. Emily has been the number one contender of the WBC, felt he waited his time, and uh, now it's here. Even though Hamili gets off balance frequently and he throws his punches, he remembers to keep his hands up, and that's what makes it hard for Morales to counterpunch from time to time. See there, he was off balance when he was coming in, but yep. it was still hard for Morales to hit him. Now he's kind of standing on the ropes. Not as much movement as he had before. Morales is very happy to see that, to be frank about it. Eric Morales is not likely to make any big mistakes. None of that really did any damage. He merely continued to stay busy, but that all was picked off. You know, the wild card so far in this fight, I think, is the defense of Renate Hamili, which is better than it looked at the beginning. He's making it very tough for Morales to really land clean shots. See, there's an example. Once Morales is on the inside, punches are being slipped, they're being blocked. Well, we wonder if, as they kind of tangle up with the wrestling there, we wonder if if Eric will begin to think that maybe he needs to put more of a show on and worry about the crowd or his own reputation or just continue to do what he has to do to win the fight. Sometimes that can be a factor, especially since we just saw Arce lose here. Well, there is pressure on you always, I think, when you fight in front of a big crowd to do more than just win. And all you can do is win, whether it's by knockout or, or, um, or decision, you have to just let it flow. 30 seconds. Just about coming up on 30 seconds left in round five. They lock up on the ropes in this very tiny ring, as Al Bernstein has pointed out tonight. We're at the Torreo de Tijuana fighting in the bull ring and closing up on the end of round that's the one that really hurts him I told you you were much better in this round Keep preparing that punch. That's the one that really hurts him. The right. Then you duck a little bit and you counter with the left up top. Of course you can do it. Let's go. Drink. Drink some water. You see how, how much more passive he was when you started going to the body? Thank, thank you, Mario Solis, for that interpretation. And now they're talking about trying to wear him down and break down the defenses. I guess the way to do that is go to the body. Yeah, and the, part of the problem with that is that Hamili, oh, nice jab by Morales. Hamili has said good defense down there as well. And there's a little, seems to be a little bit of a cut over Hamili's left Right eye, and Mar me. Yeah, and Marty Denkin came over here and uh, told us that that came from a punch, not a clash of heads. Now Morales is swarming a little bit, but Amelia's able to step out of the attack. Morales miss a lot. Now, in his last defense against Ramirez, um, 
Morales landed 43% of his punches, which is a very nice percentage, numbers according to CompuBox into that fight. And, uh, but tonight, clearly, it's a lot less. He's pressing the attack. Morales coming in behind his left. He seems to be able to double up the left sometimes now. Much less coming from Hamili in terms of offense now. He's trying to throw some bombs, being picked off by Morales as he looks to see what's going on, looking inside. And then just a little clutch there, and they push off. Hamili seemed to try to mount some kind of offense. Good counter right hand there a moment ago by Eric Morales. He has just about every punch. One punch that I thought he was going to use more of, and he started out tonight using it, is the jab, but he hasn't used that punch as much. And he, when he has, it's been mostly as a range fight. I seem to be chopping away. More blood coming from the eye of Hamili. And Dante Hamili from the Philippines. Putting up a very game effort tonight. That started something there. I don't know what was going to come. That was a right hand that was going to come from, I think, El Paso. I'm not <laughs> sure which direction is El Paso. <laughs> he held it up pretty good. Possibly San Diego. <laughs> there we go. The crowd not happy right now. But I don't know what Eric's supposed to do. He doesn't have that many opportunities. Good, a very good defensive fighter. Now he's responding and. Trying to chop away. He is doing damage. You can see the blood pouring in the right hand. There's a good punch. There's a right hand. Knocks Hamili down. Right on the chin. But just a few ticks left in round six. The referee is counting. And they're going to end the fight. And the hometown hero wins by knockout in six to retain his WBC Super Bantamweight title. And I would, I would just remark that Marty Denkin showed us what good refereeing is all about. He waited, he motioned the fighter to come to him, he took an extra two or three moments and then said, no, I'm stopping this fight. And it was the appropriate call. And for Eric Morales, that power is the equalizer because at any given time, even though as we pointed out, good defensive job by um, Hamili, this man was able to get it done with his power. I do not believe that there is anyone at 122 pounds or 125 pounds who can stand up to his power when he hits them correctly. Well, Al, we saw an example of how quickly he can get on you. He's like a cobra. We're kind of going along here, and yep. Amelia's holding on, and then all of a sudden he gets a tiny opening, and bang, he, he was looking for it all night. You can, you can run, but you can't hide. Morales is a very explosive puncher, and that maybe was as good a demonstration of it as we have, as we have ever seen in his career. Here's where Hamili was getting against the rope. The jab set this up. He's using the jab effectively, which I think is a key point because the right hand is what would do the big damage. There's the jab throwing the right hand. There's a chopping right hand. Yep. He was already starting to hurt Hamili with these punches. That was actually a lead right hand that worked there, but the reason the lead right hand worked is because he had used so many jabs. And when he hits you like that, you're in big trouble. Well, the damage was being done. And, ooh. <laughs> That's a home run ball. That is a home run ball. That was a clean, nice punch. And for Eric Morales, we see the Morales on the, from the outside with his power. We've also seen him on the inside with uppercuts and left hooks. He has many, many weapons to use against the fighter. Well, he can come at you from every angle, Al, and not to be trite about it, but the lead rider, it was a matter of him figuring out the combination, and he was going to get in sooner or later. And when you're doing the damage and Hamili's starting to show the effects of the damage, you can see right as that combination came in, he started chopping away, chopping away. His guard came down, and that's all it took within a flash of an eye. And as I said, whether it's junior featherweight, which he's at now, or featherweight where he hopes to go soon, if Eric Morales hits you right, I don't know if you're going to stand up. And that's what happened with 
uh, Hamili, and so is the Prince in his future. Is Antonio Barrera in his future? Um, one of those guys may soon be in the ring against Eric Morales.